Hey y'all, what's going on? Happy Thursday, happy Thursday. What's up, YouTube and Patreon? So YouTube will have access to a small percentage of this video. If you want to check out this full video, make sure you sign up for my Patreon. The slots are filling up quick. I have yet to activate my $10.10 here. So if you want to sign up, if you already have been part of my Cosmic Lovely tier, which is the $4.44 tier, then um, you should just be able to reactivate that. Send me an email and let me know in the comments if you're having issues. Um, and then, you know, there's the $7.77 tier. Um, so let's get into it. I want to start with the ISIS updates because there's been a lot of updates. I have been um, following the story um, in the midst of just handling my own business and preparing for my birthday weekend. I'm getting more excited. I got my hair done yesterday and um, it was such a blessing because I didn't have to go into the city. I've been going to the same beautician since I was like in middle school. I kid you not. I've been going to the same place in Harlem since I was in middle school. That's why I'd be so confused when I see this new, these new age stylists charging people damn near a thousand dollars or over a thousand dollars to do simple hairstyles. I'd be like, what the fuck? And then people actually pay that. And granted, I understand I live in the tri-state area. I live in the New Jersey, New York area. So it's a little different. I have grown accustomed to affordable prices. But even with this girl who did my um hair upstairs, my neighbor from upstairs, I remember her mother had told me um, that her daughter does hair. So I have reached out to her and asked her, and I'm going to be honest, because I didn't have no reference of her work, I just was like, okay, she only wants to charge me $60 to do this style. And the style that I got is like, I have braids. Actually, I could show y'all because I saved it on TikTok. Hold on. Let me go to my TikTok. Let's see, let's see. Uh, y'all let me know in the comments, what y'all doing for Thanksgiving? Y'all cooking? Who's making the mac and cheese? What's the tea, honey? What's the tea? Don't that be some BS when the person that's making the mac and cheese messes it up? I would be so mad. So this is the style I got right here. This style right here. Um... Only I did it with blonde hair. So I'm a blondie again. I'm a blondie. Because you know me with my ADHD neurodivergent self, I get fixated on stuff. Once I find something that works for me, I just keep doing it. But I have been trying to try new colors. But this would be the third time I'm putting blonde in. So y'all let me know in the comments what color I should try next. Maybe I should go back to red, honey, especially when airy season comes up. I'll probably go back to red. But yeah, this is the style I got. This one right here. And she did a really, really, um, she did a really good job. She did a really good job. Um, when I get paid, I want to give her an extra tip because she only charged me 60. Granted, my beautician was only going to charge me 80. So it really wasn't that far off. But I was really surprised. I was really surprised and child. Dare I say she did it a little better than my beautician because I get crochet hair all the time. And the way that she braids my hair down, I liked it. Like the way that she put the crochet hair on, I really liked the way it lays. It reminds me of back in the day before everybody got into the wigs when we would get the sew-ins. And you had the people that braided the hair to the back and then you would have like that bulk <laughs> underneath all those tracks. But the fly girls who really knew how to do the hair, they would do the circular braid where they just keep braiding and braiding and braiding until you get to the center. Um, and everybody likes those type of, you know, weaves. And then you get the weave cap if you really, really want to be safe. But Y'all, I don't know how they install the wigs, but yeah, she did a really good job. She did um, a really good job. My eyebrows are not done yet. 
because I didn't head into the city for class. I've, I'm not going to lie. I've been kind of dealing with a burnout. Um, I wouldn't say it's seasonal depression. I think I've been fighting against it. But like I said in my previous video, um, I feel like I'm in I'm at this space where I have grown leaps and bounds emotionally and mentally, and I have made a lot of strides in my healing journey when it comes to grieving my parents over the past three and a half years or so. And um, it's just interesting. I had a wave of grief yesterday. I really did. Um, and I just like cried and cried and cried, but it's okay. That's okay. It's okay to cry. It is the holiday season. It is a um, family oriented season. And yeah, I just like, I don't know. I was listening to this song. It's from the eighties. I had heard it on someone's TikTok while they were roller skating. And it just reminded me of how I grew up. I grew up in a house where we had like, um, a stereo radio system and we always left it on WBLS, especially at night. Like sometimes my mom and dad would let us put it to like power 105.1 or hot 97, New York city, you know, tri-state area stations. But, um, it would stay on WBLS. And that's how I grew to appreciate a lot of music from the seventies, from the eighties, from the nineties, because WBLS plays that music. Um, but I had heard this song yesterday and it really reminded me of my mother's side of the family. It's called Go Outside in the Rain. And I think her name, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Malira. It's it's from 1989. Let me see. I'm gonna play a little bit of it. Hopefully they don't try to come and get me. Let me see. reminded me because that is the music like I don't know if y'all heard that y'all probably did it but <laughs> it just reminded me um because that's the music that I grew up listening to in tandem of course to like the current music of my time um and I just cried like I just had a nice little cry and I do think it was my Nana's birthday yesterday as well happy belated birthday to my Scorpio queen born on November 20th um, my late Nana's birthday. So yeah, it just was a lot. And then it was raining. It's raining today, but rain is a spiritual, you know, property. It, it It's about cleansing. Um, after the rain, the sun comes out and yeah. So I've been in my little fields, but I do know that better days are coming. And I remember being in a very dark hole in a dark space and praying for the peace that I have now. So I do try to slow down and um, show gratitude and thank God. And for those that are willing, because you don't have to be, it is perfectly okay when, you know, especially when these seasons arise that, you know, are very family oriented and community oriented and jolly, jolly, jolly. And, you know, that song is the most wonderful time of the year. For a lot of people, that's not the case, especially in this economy, especially in the times that we're navigating. For a lot of people, that is not the case. And if you are one of those people where that's not the case, that's perfectly fine. And to be honest, sometimes, right, having a period in life where you are more lonesome and more so in solitude, especially when it's intentional, right, um, and you're not fighting against it. It's a blessing in disguise because that pressure to constantly show up and put on a face, um, it kind of just begins to fall by the wayside because you start to realize it's one or the other. Am I going to take care of my internal state and maybe fall off a little bit with the physical, you know, social, external 
or am I going to half-ass the physical, external, and social and force myself to show up knowing that I barely can give maybe under 50%. You understand? And wisdom comes in and you decide to take care of yourself. So try to alchemize it again. But if you're in a space where you just want to be miserable, bitter, and you grieving, ain't nothing wrong with that either. That's part of the process. We're all at different um, spaces in this process. And um, yeah, I just can't believe I'll be 29 on fucking Saturday. That's another thing. I have a son in the 11th house because I'm a zero degree sad son. So I'm literally a cusper and it's in my 11th house of Scorpio. And then the ruler um, of my Scorpio house is Leo. So my birthday always brings mixed emotions anyways, just because of <laughs> the energy in my birth chart that gets activated. But it's all good. It's it's all good. I'm excited to go to Albany and see my best friends. We're going to go to the spa. I can't wait to get my Manny Petty massage and sit in the pool in the steam room. I hope I don't mess up my hair, though. Maybe not that steam room. <laughs> Just got the hair done, honey. Just got the hair done. I don't think I want to sweat the edges out. But, um... Yeah, I'm just excited. I'm excited and I'm bringing Tempe as well. She's excited too. She thinks I'm leaving her. I was packing my suitcase last night and getting some cleaning done. I'm going to finish cleaning today. And um, she started crying and I'm like, girl, you coming with me. And Tempe's birthday is on Monday, y'all. She will be three. She's going to be grown. Our baby is 21 in dog years this coming Monday. Um, And yeah, mm. I love her so much. I love her. Um, the reason why I'm actually doing this video for y'all is because next week I'm going to be off. Um, off from class and off from my practicum, my internship social work job. And um, I'm going to use that time to just get all my ducks in order and just dot I's and cross T's and get schoolwork done. Y'all will get a video. Y'all probably will get a video on Thanksgiving or like towards the end of the week. Um, but I wanted to get this video out to y'all before the weekend because at once the weekend comes, I'm just going to be, you know, doing my own thing. And then when we come into the week, I have a lot of work to get done and catch up on. So, yeah, I just wanted to bless y'all with an extra video. I really am working on consistency that's something that really tugs on my sense of self-esteem and my sense of self-worth. Um, but I really just hope that y'all know, like, I always have the best intentions. It's never a thing where I'm trying to, like, give y'all the middle finger on my ass to kiss. It's just, it's my Sagittarius energy. Sometimes we can overcommit and overindulge. And I think prioritizing Patreon um, is just the best way to go. Um, and yeah, and like I said, y'all get a preview here, but if you want the full video, make sure y'all head to Patreon. So, um, Isis, let's get back to Isis, right? I know that was like a little life update. I'm just a little tired because I had to wake up at seven and I didn't go to bed till wee hours to register for um, classes. I registered for my final um semester and I know it's gonna come so quick like I know once we come back from Christmas break and all of that that shit is just gonna fly by it's gonna fly by and I'm so excited don't worry this will be time stamp so if y'all want to listen to all of this y'all just get past it uh, <laughs> but oh my god I'm so excited of the classes I'm taking next semester because I could take electives and my new thing is the weekend classes. I actually like those weekend classes where you meet two to three times. Um, I'm going to be taking three weekend classes, but they're only online and they're only like two weekends a piece and they're very spread out. So I think my first class, I think it'll be in January, but if not, it'll be in February. Then I have one in March. Then I have one in April. Yeah, I think I don't start until February. I think it's like February, March, April, two weekends apiece. Um, and it's cool. It's like grant writing. I'm taking this grant writing class. 
um, which will help. Like if I ever want to run a nonprofit, I currently work at a nonprofit. So that will give me a leg up, honey. She's growing up. She's stepping into her big girl panties. So I'm taking a grant writing class. Um, and it's interesting because I was talking to the CEO of my job and um, she overheard me talking about that. She's like, really, you're doing that? And I'm like, yeah, she's learning. She's learning how to um, get points as long as they're in alignment with the way that God is ordering her steps. OK, catch it, because I don't mind going the extra mile to get opportunities, professional opportunities when it's from a heart centered place. I was thinking about that last night, like, hmm, I wonder if I was this mature when I was seeking other career opportunities with life look different, but everything happens for a reason. So I'm going to be taking a grant writing class. I'm also taking um, this elective that really talks about schizophrenia and um, bipolar disorder and like just the origins and how that comes to be about and different things. Speaking of, and I'm so happy, schizophrenia, they have this new medication. Now, I am not a um, licensed clinical professional, so please go do your research. But they have this new medication where you just got to get two shots a year. Now, I think before you get to that part, you have to take a shot every month for the first four months. But then after that, you just get a shot a year. And the, I was so happy when I seen that commercial the other day because a lot of people that live with schizophrenia, I really feel bad for them. And it's not a pity. I empathize with them. That's a better way to say it. Because people that live with schizophrenia, the medicine that's given to them, it zombifies them so much. A lot of them don't want to take that medicine. And unfortunately, you have people within that population that will turn to drugs and unfortunately, sometimes that makes it worse. And it's just so sad. Like I actually had a cousin. I could see his face clear as day. His mother, she had it. And that's how it got passed down because it is hereditary. And he, 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 I don't, I hope he's doing better now. Cause I ain't been around my mother's side of the family since 2021. But even when I was around, um, he was barely around. He was barely around. And I'll never forget um, when he did come back around once. And I think like he did some foul shit. A female family member was saying like, yo, I knew he was coming because I had a dream of a wolf. And that shit shook me. I was like young when she told me that. But I'm happy for that demographic of people that deal with that mental illness because that will be good. That I, I and I really would like to see. I'm gonna get some more information, but I really would like to see how that works. Like, okay, I just get two shots, and then it naturally just helps me manage. But even when you have schizophrenia, if I'm recalling correctly from what I've learned, that period where the person is having, I guess, an episode is the proper way to say it, it's a short period of time, and then usually. Once the person finds a treatment that works for them, they're better able to manage it. But it's still it's still very hard. Like I was um watching this video with Anderson Cooper and y'all could go and search it on YouTube where he was just getting an idea of what people with schizophrenia deal with. And they have it to where he puts these headphones on and you just hear a bunch of fucking voices and the what he was doing is he was supposed to put something very simple together, like make an airplane. I think that's what it was, make a paper plane. And he couldn't even do it. He couldn't even do it because all those damn voices, how the hell am I able to hear myself if I'm hearing all these damn voices? It's really sad. It's really sad. I think a lot of us fail to realize that having a mind <laughs> that works is a blessing because you have some people where, they did not ask for that. That's just in their DNA and bloodstream. And now they have to figure out how to navigate it. And I, I just could not imagine. So I was really happy to hear about that medicine. Um, and I'm excited to see 
Um, I'm just going to speak positivity. I'm excited to see the positive effects because people that have serious mental illnesses, they deserve intervention and treatment plans that doesn't take them away from who they are. And a lot of people that tend to have that mental illness, they tend to be very artistic, creative. They have some genius level talent. And that's why a lot of them don't like same thing with um Kanye West with bipolar. He doesn't like to take that medication because it stops him from doing what probably keeps him sane, even though he still be off his rocker. It's a balance, honey. So, yeah. So, I'm so sorry for the long intro. That's enough of my social work geeky talk. Um, okay, ISIS, 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 ISIS. Um, she has started a GoFundMe. And a lot of people feel away. Here's the thing. I still don't have anything negative to say. There was this video clip that has been floating around where the babies are upstairs with her husband and they're like screaming. And she's just kind of like trying to do like the mom thing where it's like, okay, let me just ignore they're with their dad. But of course, given what we know that their father did to them, a lot of people's antennas are raised. Um, I don't know. I really don't know what to say. It's such a touchy topic that I really just don't know what to say about it. It's very unfortunate and it's very sad. Um, again, like I said on my um, community wall, we are living in times where I know you tired. I know you exhausted. I know we all have things going on, but you are going to have to learn how to think for yourself and use your own wisdom that comes from within. There is no shortcut to life. And I don't knock people that try to take it because life is rough and life is hard. But I really hope a lot of you young ladies learn something. Like I said, I am 29. Shara is not new to me because I've been on YouTube for years as a viewer and as a vlogger. She just so happened to go viral on TikTok because of the times we're living in and because of the stuff that she's been saying. But if anybody looks at Shara, Shara doesn't live a lifestyle that I personally want. If you have to constantly finesse and if you have to constantly wear a mask or present with these intentions, but behind that presentation, you have more nefarious intentions, that just speaks to the background that Shara comes from and what she has learned in an effort to survive. That's what was taught to her by way of her circumstances. And then she made an intentional choice as a grown woman to keep that as learned behavior because for her and the quality of life that she wants, it works for her. A lot of people, I think, fail to realize, and I'm one of these people as well, if we're constantly seeking advisement and community and direction beneath all of that is our inner child in my opinion this is my opinion beneath all of that is our inner child that is seeking to be parented and or reparented in a way and I say that to say money Having a roof over your head, having a consistent amount of food in your fridge, being able to wear these diamonds and these purses and these shoes, it's not going to fill that void. Now, what I will say, because I'm a realist, is it may make it easier for you to navigate that void and fill that void in an internal fashion because you're not fighting against material poverty. You're not trying to reparent yourself and heal your wounds while also struggling to pay your bills and not being able to stay on top of yourself and, you know, feel good about yourself and so on and so forth. It may help. But see, in this case with ISIS, you never know what you're going to get 
when you seek out situations from a deceptive place. If you're willing to tie yourself to someone else just strictly off of oh, this person is going to externally, materially, and superficially provide for me, that is never going to end well for you. Because a lot of you women sell yourself short and you think that you this big, you know, Billy badass and I'm out here, fuck these niggas, I'm out here getting money, this, that, and the third. And a lot of y'all are not even built like that. You're just hurt and that's okay. You're just wounded and that is okay. You just want and need to be reparented and that is okay. But what's not okay and what's not pleasing to y'all ears and y'all egos is that more often than not, you are going to have to get the ball rolling on that journey because nobody knows you better than yourself and whatever higher source that you feel you're an extension to. And your divine counterpart won't be put in alignment and come to assist, not initiate, but assist and participate in a shared experience of being in a relationship with you. Until you initiate and participate in your own individual journey of being in a relationship with yourself. Nobody never wants to hear that. But then you look up one year, two years, three years, four years, five years later, y'all having the same conversations. Men ain't shit. Men ain't shit. Women ain't shit. Women ain't shit. No, it's the shit that's within you. If you can smell it, why would you assume that other people can't smell it on you? If you're going out your way to purposely conceal certain parts of yourself when you're dating and seeking, why are you confused when you run across someone who's doing the same exact thing? Oh, because in your mind, you've rationalized your deceptiveness. It makes sense to you, but it doesn't make sense when you run into someone who acts just like you. And a lot of y'all are not real about that. Ain't nothing, it's nothing wrong with choosing that for your life. The most important thing is the dollar dollar bill. If that's what you choose for your life, fine. You have kids while you're making that choice, that's fine too. But you deal with the consequences and repercussions that come with that because there will be. Isis is in a, is within a spiritual battle. She's in a battle within herself. Her higher self, I see a, a good person. I see a good woman who wants to be a good mother. But her lower vibrating self can't fathom doing the work to get there, to be that good person and to be that good mother. And now you've tried to take a shortcut and now it's created more work for you. I'll never forget when my therapist said that you're just re-injuring yourself when you make impulsive decisions as a result of trying to remedy whatever it is that you're not willing to deal with as of yet. Like it's, it's, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But you just have to be adult enough to stand on it. That's where a lot of people fall. Everybody wants to make excuses, make excuses, make excuses. I'm done arguing because at the end of the day, my life reflects what I come on here and suggest and encourage to those that are in alignment with the message and ready to participate in the integration process. I think a lot of us fail to realize that we quick to show a lot of people grace, but are you showing your mama and your grandmama that grace? You showing your aunties and them that grace? 
Oh, give her grace. Da, 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 da. Well, go give your mama grace. Because the fact that you don't see not a issue wrong with some of the decisions and choices that ice has made. That's coming from a place that you know that you're probably capable of that or you already are doing shit like her. And more often than not, if we peel back the layers, it goes back to what happened when you were a kid and what your parental figures failed to do for you. It's a cycle. And a lot of us walk around and think that we are okay. A lot of us walk around and think that we're doing the damn thing. We're handling it because, okay, I graduated. I got my degree. Okay, I bought my house. I got my car. Shit, you may even have a, a, a cool partner. But in between those big things, what does the little things look like? Are you kind? Are you snappy? Are you somebody that gets easily irritated? Do you have an inability to be corrected? Do you have an inability to be called in? Because those are the small covert symptoms of the bigger disease that we just put a Band-Aid on. Oh, I lost weight. That's a Band-Aid. It doesn't matter that I have all this trauma because I look good. Oh, I finally got that promotion. I'm making more money. I could take me an extra vacation. That's another Band-Aid. Because it doesn't matter that I'm carrying all this trauma. I look good and now my money is good. I'm able to buy that new Benz. That's another Band-Aid. I'm driving good. I'm looking good. I'm making good money. It's what society conditions. It's how society conditions us. And I think that's why the more I mature, the more compassionate I become. Because we're all living under a collective conditioning and we're just at different points in our journey. And that's okay. That's okay. Everybody will be okay in their own way. You can't save everybody. And that's not our job. Let God be God. I like being me. <laughs> so yeah, I just wish her the best. Um... I do see that there was like a protection order. She did like an order of protection against him. Um, I think it was in the, the in 2023. And a lot of people found his picture and whatnot. And it's crazy because you go to her page and she's like, I want to teach y'all how to be a trophy wife. This is how you, you be a trophy wife. And you know what? Even though she was deceptive and not telling us all these things that was going on, especially with her being essayed all those times um, in the beginning of her marriage, she's still for those, she's still for those that are able to learn, that are able to chew the meat, spit the bones, and integrate nuance. Um, she still taught something. Because it shows that you don't have to have much inside to be a trophy wife. Think about a trophy. It's plastic. You can easily break it. It's a symbol of winning within a competitive, you know, field. And then after admiring it and, and getting that, like, you know, that hit of, oh, yeah, I accomplished something. What do you do? You find a place to sit it and you don't even really, you may tend to it at first. You may walk past it, stand there and remember all that, you know, needed to do to get it. But after a while, it, it just sits there. A trophy just sits there because that's what it's meant to do. It's meant to give you that short term joy, happiness, whatever the case may be. But then after that, you want to go back to living your life. <laughs> And the only time you will pay attention to that trophy is if you have a dinner party, if you're telling a story on how you got the trophy and, oh, come here, it's over here, da-da-da-da. That's what a trophy is. 
So now when you apply what I just said, in my opinion, of course, feel free to push back because this is an open space, open community. When you apply that to the concept of trophy wife, again, in the beginning, you gushing, you admiring it because it speaks to something that your ego was able to accomplish. And there's nothing wrong with that. We all have ego, myself included. And yeah, you'll show her off or whatever the case may be or brag on her, but it's not from a heart-centered place. It's ego. Competition to a degree is ego. It could be a healthy ego, but still, it, it's still ego. So, yeah, she she taught her how to be a trophy wiper, right? I ignore all the red flags. Take all the abuse. When people ask, lie, lie, lie. What did um, Cat Williams say? The number one requirement of selling your soul is to act like you didn't do it. Boom. So if that's the lifestyle y'all want, fine. I told, I tell y'all all the time, and I already know what it's going to be. Um, because we live in a very surface level and visual society. So I guess y'all will have to see my life to start really listening to me. But if a man wants to provide for you for the umpteenth time, if a man truly wants to provide for you, he doesn't have to make more money than you, sweetheart. I've seen it with my own two fucking eyes. He does not have to make more money than you. You have plenty of men out there that make less than their woman on paper, but because of who they are as men, because of what they've been shown and taught, they're going to take care regardless, even if that means driving fucking Uber. I have one of those personalities where people tell me their life story all the time, and, and I love car rides. I like to put my headphones in, just look out the window. And just listen to my music and think. I can't wait to take Amtrak tomorrow to Albany and see all the pretty fall leaves and stuff. I look forward to simple stuff like that. I have always liked car rides. I get that from my mother who she would tell me stories about my late grandfather. Her father would like wake my late Nana up and my mom up and just be like, come on, let's get in a car and then drive them somewhere like to City Island or Atlantic City and stuff like that. So I like that spontaneity in the sense of just simple stuff. Take me by a body of water, I'm good. And I think most of us are like that. But because most of us don't take the time to learn what we really enjoy and what it is that we really like, I think naturally we go chasing a lot of things. Remember that story that I posted on my wall about the Mexican fisherman versus the Wall Street CEO. And he's over here telling him, yo, you could do this, you could do that, you could do this. And he goes, okay, so after all of that, then what? And that CEO responds by telling him, then you could retire and do what it is that you're already doing without taking all those extra steps. <laughs> like it's it's interesting and I posted that story because I always want to suggest because everyone has the right to live and be who they are I always want to suggest sometimes the extra shit that we're doing we really don't need to do it but because we don't want to upset the conditioning the system whether it's the family system that's depending and relying on you to walk a certain way your social circle where everybody's moving a certain way and you know that's the crazy thing we be knowing in our gut that if we go the other way we gonna make people feel a way and instead of using that to empower ourselves to get further in alignment with our authentic selves it scares us because now it's threatening our comfort zone as 50 cent says a lot of people, most people are loyal to their comfort zone. And that's how most people stagnate on their journey. And don't fulfill their divine duties. 
So yeah, a man that's going to provide for you, he don't need to make more than you. And you don't be knowing what anyone has. Haven't we learned this lesson time and time again? Remember when Steve Harvey had um that um show and I think he had two sisters come on there and they were so nasty towards the men that actually had the fucking money? Or like when you go back to charm school and none of the women were able to guess the renaissance man the man that really had it going on because they were so hyper fixated on the surface this is a tale as old as time a lot of y'all want the look y'all want the wedding but you don't want the marriage <laughs> you know it's it's ridiculous and then you drive yourself insane constantly lying to yourself Constantly lying to yourself. And I think that's why sometimes I get frustrated. But I get frustrated by the fact that like, damn, I feel like I have something of substance to say, but no one is listening. But that's not me. That has nothing to do with me. It, it goes back to what I've said. Everybody has to learn on their own time. It's just unfortunate. And then there was another story about a young lady who came on the internet gushing about finding her sugar daddy and then she ended up dead shortly after. I think what people fail to realize is you have predators out here that are excited that there are impressionable women that are very early in their journey of discernment, very early in their journey of learning not so much what they want, but what they don't want. And unfortunately, you have some predatory MFers that prey on that. Similar to that other girl that got um, dismembered by that white man. I wonder whatever happened with that. They found the rest of her body. They had found her torso and all types of stuff. It's devastating. All because what? You don't want to get the fuck up and work for yourself? And I've been there. Like I said, that's how I got scammed out of 10K. But because naturally I'm someone that's going to go get it for myself anyways, I was just in a period. A lot of y'all, especially for us, those of us in our 20s, we're just in a period. We're just in a period. But if you're fucking eating all that bullshit up that by the age of 30, your damaged goods, and we're living in 2024 when as long as you take care of yourself moderately, your ass should be able to make it at minimum into your fucking 70s. That's 40 fucking years after this goddamn deadline that y'all put on like it's nuts, but it's because y'all don't stop to think for yourselves. I'm telling you. Y'all better start thinking for yourselves. Whatever it is that you need to let fall by the wayside so that you can free up some mental space, you better start thinking for yourself because a lot of you will start to regret it. A lot of you will start to regret it. Pisces is entering the North Node um, in January. It's going to conjunct Saturn at some point in Neptune. That illusion is about to fucking burst. I'm telling you, y'all have to stop searching through life through superficial fucking lens. And a lot of us do it because we want to prove something to someone. We want to prove something to someone. We want to show people. And that's very human. But there comes a point where you have to make a decision for your higher consciousness that let me try to unlearn that. That's where I'm at. I'm in my unlearning phase, not my mastery phase when it comes to that. Because I'm building my self-esteem back up. But I'm in my unlearning phase. Okay? So, if y'all want to hear the rest of the topics, we're going to be talking about Big Meech is home, honey. <laughs> Somebody had posted that clip from Players Club when it was like, all right, bitches, there's money out there. <laughs> I really want y'all to let that man mature, though. 
I watched the BMF documentary. By the time they picked him up, that nigga was tired. He was tired of going to the clubs. He was tired of going out. He was tired of doing that. Um, granted, he's been sitting for a minute, so he may want to get back out there, have some type of party. But I think he's still in the halfway house. So, yeah, he linked up with Fifth. So we're going to talk about that. And his son, it was so cute. They was getting their Manny and Petties together. Love the father-son bonding in the black community. Kiki Palmer has written another book. Now, I could have sworn she wrote a book last year, but she is a Virgo. Okay. Um, so I expect nothing less than she's a Sag Moon. We love telling our business and talking about ourselves for the perceived greater good of people being able to learn from us, if you can. So we're going to talk about Kiki Palmer. Um, she's given us some updates with Darius and all of that. She also talked about the sacrifices her family made. So I want to talk about that, um, the importance of community and truly um, being family oriented. OK, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Megan Good. She is engaged to Jonathan Majors. Y'all are so stupid talking about he's finally found his Coretta girl. I'm going to just say this. If Devin couldn't turn her into a first lady, Jonathan Majors is not going to turn her into a Coretta. But I do think that they're good for each other. I feel like I did their synastry before. And yeah, we're going to talk more about that. And um, Cardi B said that she put her album out next year. <laughs> Bitch, and I'm Whitney Houston. I didn't die. I'm right here sitting up in the bathtub. We're going to talk about that. There's been a lot of um, nonsense going on with Milagro, Joe Budden, and Armand Wiggins. So we are also going to get into that. And then there was some updates with this Diddy meat mill situation about some things that I, I, I can't say here on YouTube. Um, but we're also going to talk about that. And there are a few topics that y'all suggested on um, Patreon, so I'm going to touch those topics. This is probably going to be a two-hour video. And the Shane documentary, we are going to talk about that as well. So if you want to hear the mess, because you know I, I bring the substance to YouTube. You see how fly I am? I give y'all the substance, the soul food for free. But the mess, you got to pay for that. You got to pay for the mess. You got to pay for the low vibrations, okay? We all paying for it. You either pay in the front or you pay in the back. <laughs> but come have a good time with me over at Patreon. We about to get into the second half of this video. Thank you so much for everybody on YouTube that has tuned in. Um, and yeah, happy birthday to me. It is officially Sagittarius season. It is 11 21. So happy birthday to all my archers, all my horsies. Yes, the temperance. Happy birthday to my Sagittarius. Happy Thanksgiving, just in case I don't come back on here a week from now and say it. And um, my cash app is on the screen if you want to bless me. But you could just bless me by, you know, leaving a comment and telling me something good. Tell me something good that happened this week. I love y'all and have a great week and be kind to yourself so that it will be easier for you to be kind to others. All right. <laughs>